Now, if you've never liked, subscribed, or follow our channel before, you definitely want to make sure that you go to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to like. Don't forget the bell icon. That way you can get updates when our latest content is dropped. Today, I'm talking about the death of the ABNB Leverage Investor. That's right. See, most of you guys don't realize that ABNB, underneath the current regulations for a residential house in a community, the guidance for that is totally different than a long-term or short-term municipality bond writer. Now, you may say, what are you talking about? Today's show, we're going to go right into it, and we're going to talk about local community or state, or maybe you work in two states where you have real estate properties, but you really are a municipality bond writer. We know them as perpetuities, which means you're using the paper asset. That's the only way you're able to make money. And you added a one leg on the transaction. So re I had the opportunity to talk to a few people who are in the market and they actually are real estate developers. And at the same time, I had the opportunity to talk to people who do A, B, and B. Now, just like crypto, I said that crypto market didn't actually produce anything. And because it didn't produce anything, it was going to crash. I wasn't wrong. I told all my associates who was close to me who wanted to know my opinion on the matter. Now remember, an opinion means I'm opposing a view. At the same time, I gave them some truths, which are facts that I saw when it came to it. And what do we find? Ever since June of 2022, we're actually going back to May, we see in the crypto winter. Then we see now FTX has been totally wiped out. They're in the middle of a bankruptcy. Another Cryptocurrency exchange is about to actually who had money on that exchange with FTX. They're in a verge now and thinking about teeter and should they we file as well. So we're seeing multiple things take place. But today we're going to focus on municipality, perpetuity, bond writers, and how they, if they're using A, B, and B, are about to be crushed. Let's get right into it. Some of you need to check down the description. I'm going to talk about a young lady who's a YouTuber who decided to go because of FOMO. We know that fear missing out. She got involved in doing an A, B, and B, but her background was actually being a YouTuber. She has a great channel. Check it out in the description. I want to thank her, Mrs. Selby uh, Church, because she, on her YouTube channel, she actually talked about her personal experience. And I think it's always good. If you're on YouTube and you find a YouTuber that says, hey, you know what? I had a FOMO situation. I got into doing some A, B, and B's, and let me tell you what results is. Let me tell you what her results is. Boom, that's what she made. She ended up not making any money when you look at over time. Now, the reason I say this is important because when you get short-sighted and you get into anything and it's a business, you never base your decision on a month to month. You know what you base it on? The good old fashioned term, uh, annual return. Anytime you go away from annual, I'm going to tell you what you're doing. You're speculating. All investments, credit cards, mortgages, even if you have a mortgage. Shelby got a mortgage because she went out and actually got that Airbnb on a mortgage. She makes a 12-month payment, which means that her interest that she gets to claim on her credit, depending upon how she did that transaction, if she did it as a business, the business is going to get that interest check at the end of the year, or her personal, they get that interest check. Being the however way she did this transaction, okay, the reality is her interest is based on an annual return, the annual. That's what you're going to pay the interest off that principal. Now, let's go into it. Writing local municipality bonds, perpetuities. Now, you might have never knew that a person who actually does a residential lease, because aka long-term or short-term leases, and Airbnb is not considered a short-term lease. Because a short-term lease is what we call a month-to-month -month lease. And I think sometimes people make this mistake. So a month-to-month -month lease is actually underneath the municipality's rules in your state. We're going to tell you, month-to-month -month is considered a short term. But that's not what an Airbnb deal is, because it may be a day, it may be a week. Most people on the Airbnbs are not signing a month-to-month -month lease that has the word perpetual, which means that, you know, if you stay there a month and you don't notify them, you, you end up leasing another month. You don't notify them. So if you was going to rent for one month, you would have had to say at the minute, listen, I'm only going to rent from November 1st, but on December 1st, I'm, I'm checking out of here. I'm just waiting for my house to get built. Oh, I'm waiting to close on my house. So it's only one month. But let's say if it's month to month, then you're there for two months. You got to give them 30 days. So at least you're there for 90 days. That's a short term lease. So if you've never been in real estate before, and again, don't forget to comment in the section. I love talking to real estate guys. 
because the real estate guys will tell you, oh, let me tell you this. I say, well, let's go. And I always go back, pull the research from the state, the city, and the municipality that you're doing your real estate in, and I'll show you what the rules say because you're ignoring those rules. So short term, month to month. Long term, 12 months and more. Those are considered, again, longer lease term. 12 months or more. 36 months, you may have a lease. Most people move into a property and say, I've been here for 10 years. Interesting enough, they didn't sign a 180 month lease when they did that. You know what happened? They signed a one year, then another one year, then another one year, then another one year. 10 years later, they've been in the same property because of the word perpetual. Now they might've gotten to notice that the rent's gonna go up over the 10 years they've been there, but that's called long-term leases. Now a software company by the name of Airbnb started and when it first started, to give you a little history lesson, it was about just finding a space in somebody's house when you're going somewhere that you can actually just rent out. And from that, and most people were doing it, when Airbnb first started, I had a few associates, I had a few friends who just rented out their couch. That's what it was. They had access to the bathroom and a couch. And they made some money. And again, at the end of the time, these guys were not in college. They were, um, they had their own place, but they were single. They were trying to make some extra money. They had an extra bedroom. So they just leased out that bedroom because the other roommate and them got into it and they decided to leave and they were like, I can do this on my own. They're like, well, I can make money. So that's what Airbnb was for them. I remember talking to them about it and I always reminded them that you wanted to do a long term or a month to month. Do not go into this one week, two days, a weekend thing because anytime that you do something and it comes to investing and you only can have a short term view, you gotta understand that if you made an agreement prior to you turning this into investment and you wrote a long-term contract, you're about to make a horrible mistake because short-term views don't look at the long-term agreements you made. So that little short-term burst of income that you, you just make, remember you naturally are a consumer. You're not naturally are investors. A lot of these people are doing this as a secondary income, which means they need the money to consume. They don't need the money to grow the deal. They need the money so they can live better, show status. Now, with that being said, we gotta remember that they're doing perpetuity, so they're doing local municipality perpetuity bonds. A residential lease is considered a perpetuity. It is a legal debt security that can be, you can sue somebody in a local court because they didn't meet the bond criteria. It's important that you understand that. That means that on the real estate transaction by itself, on this real estate, and you got a $100,000 house. Now, today houses are way higher than that, but I'm using this, this is not that. This is not a house in a bad neighborhood either. This is just an example, just to be very clear for you guys out there who like to be sarcastic in the comment section. $100,000. Let's assume that the rent on this is $1,500. So it's a $1,500 rent. Now, this is not gonna be similar to Shelby's. It's not gonna be similar to the real estate agents out there saying they doing Airbnbs. But what it is going to be similar to is this. This deal here was on a 30 year loan. One of the other reasons that's going to be important that I'm going to tell you that the Airbnb leveragers, not the Airbnb company, but the Airbnb leveragers are about to lose the leverage and it's going to blow up. We're about to see for the first time a real estate a crash that's going to take place. That's going to be worse than 2008 because of all of these people who went out and got these type of loans. Vacation, second home loans. This is what they went and financed this. This were not investor property loans that they did. It was a big rumor all through social media and realtor was saying, go get a second home loan for a vacation home. And they loaded up. Again, this is another instrument that the financial industry abused. Now we've seen in 2008, they were just putting people in houses, letting people who couldn't qualify. Well, this is another one of these 2000 situations that made 2008 be a nightmare for the market back in the, the great recession of 2008. This is going to bring down the real estate market. On top of that, these individuals got these loans and they truly cannot afford these to be investment properties. How come? because they went straight in the Airbnb these properties. These loans were not listed. Now for you guys who went out and got a home loan as an investor, non-owner occupied, and you showed that you had a lease, 
it's very difficult to show a lease to get a loan on a non-owner occupied and you show you doing A, B, and B on this property, short term, because that's gonna tell any lender that that is a default rate that's through the roof because it's not this. You go do a regular loan as a non-owner occupied, they're looking at either you got some type of long-term contract, 12 months, 20, 24 months, 36 months. They really do put more scrupulous on you if you're gonna go out here and show month to month. I have a tenant, they've been with me for 10 years, they're gonna tell you write a new lease. You're going to have to show them that you're not doing anything because you agreed to a 30 year loan. Now, with that being said, this 1500, and I get it guys, because I'm going to tell you one thing that I do know. Whenever you start doing what they call markup, now, the lease itself, again, you don't make any money on real estate. Right now, the only person making money is the bank on this deal. So the bank is making money on this deal if you got this $100,000 house. You know, you let's say the rent is fifteen hundred. You're paying a thousand dollars a month. Again, this is not stat. This is just an example. So you'll say I'm making five hundred positive cash flow. Good old five hundred dollars. In a in a simple in a simplification way of explaining this, you say I got five hundred dollars in positive cash flow. I pay a thousand dollars in a mortgage. This is your mortgage payment. This is your cash flow. So cash. So we'll put a uh, return on cash. And then you have your actual lease contract. This lease contract is actually considered a, municip a local municipality perpetuity bond. That's what a residential lease is. Now, you didn't know it, but you're actually a bond writer. Locally, though. See, back in the day, we'll look at the stock market. You see people down in the pits and the commodity market, and they actually selling bonds. We know today, you know, a lot of that's done electronically. So you don't really see that anymore. All this stuff is done electronically when it comes to bonds and computers. But back in the day, people were selling bonds, selling bonds, whether they were corporate bonds. Well, guess what you are? You are a local bond writer. That lease is now you have your own pit representing your own name, because if you got this house in your personal name, it's owner-occupied, it wasn't a vacation house, you are a municipality, local municipality bond writer. You write that lease, the question is gonna be, now, you wrote that lease, you wrote that bond, is it a long-term bond, is it a short-term bond, with following these definitions based on the municipality? When Airbnb came out, especially in the last five years, post-COVID, one of the things that a lot of the local cities were doing was adjusting because they didn't have any provisions in this and they never wanted to lose these comps. We already know that if you have a residential property that you convert into a non owner occupied, it takes a comp out of the neighborhood. And it also bring down the neighborhood if it starts to be more rented than it is owner occupied. So that's one of the things they were frowning upon. It was never meant to do that when they made these residential communities. They didn't want to make these like an apartment lease. Well, Airbnb came out, they just disrupted the industry. They were cheaper than going to get a hotel and it took off. Now, with that being said, when you're looking at this type of transaction right here, this looks very, 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 to me as a person that does and does deals all day long in paper assets, suspect. Now the average person won't see this because all they say is that I'm making an extra 500 bucks, $500 positive cash flow. I'm making $6,000 a month. I just want you to know, even looking at this deal and I'm assuming this house is 1300 square feet. If you've never ever wrote local municipality bonds and you just jumping into real estate, I'm going to tell you right now, that is not $6,000 that you make a year. That's 1,300 square feet. Automatically, you're not making $6,000. And if you live off $6,000, you're going to find out very quickly as a landlord, you don't have no money, you can't fix your property. So that's definitely a wrong approach to take. And that takes experience, but that also takes you making sure that you get truth, not FOMO. But that's what's happening right now. And that's the reason I'm telling you, Airbnb market is going to crash, guys. How is it going to crash? These were not non-owner occupied, these were vacation homes, which means that loan document that they sign off and then they A, B, and B that, oh, that's fraud. That's fraud at its best. This looks just like the Great Recession of 2008. People were getting houses, loan documents were being lied on. A second vacation house means you're going to be living in that house. That's going to be your house. You're not going to do anything short term on that because I can assure you, I spoke to several loan officers in different states over the last two weeks. And they were telling me about, yeah, a lot of, and, they, and this was their main concern. I hope these loans don't default while I'm working here. 
because they know they're going to get in trouble because they're the ones that sign off and bring those loans to the deal, along with these real estate agents that pop this bull crap to tell people to do this type of stuff. It's wrong. How was it wrong? Because they entered wrong. This is not non-owner occupied. This was a vacation second home loan, which meant it's for you. Now, that's not the only thing. The feds recently stated this. If you built your entire portfolio of short-term income, it's no different than a temporary bull market. We're in a bear market today. So you started doing this A, B, and B after the Great Recession of 2008. When the markets begin to climb, we went through the situation and people were spending money, you know, interest rates were low, people had extra cash, you know, we got the tax incentives doing the last administration, you had more cash, then they, they gave out these checks, I like to call them slap you in the face checks, because a lot of people went out and took these checks and some of them didn't spend it, now they're spending that money and they're spending it around out, they kept it in the bank, others just blew the money immediately which means it went right back into the 1% of the wealthy's hands because they own the businesses that you funded. With that being said, the feds recently stated that they want to stop travel. They want to stop spending and they want to stop the housing. Well, we're in trouble. That's the reason that I want to thank Shelby Church. And again, go down in the description, go look at her channel. Matter of fact, like and subscribe to her channel because what you're going to find out is that she actually gave her what I would like to call an Excel spreadsheet. So I'm not going to go through that process because she does a great job telling her own experience. But I'm going to tell you, she got caught in FOMO. And you're probably watching this video getting caught in FOMO. If you start Googling bad experience with A, B, and B, people stealing your stuff and the rest of these things, you'll start noticing this. You'll start noticing that this is a common practice. See, hotels have certain things on file that they can take advantage of. You don't have that same ability because... With a hotel, which is a commercial transaction, they got rent rolls. You don't have a rent roll when you got a single family house. You just have one perpetuity. And you are the support, which means if they don't pay, you're paying. Well, recently, if you was to check out, the government's putting statistics out there. One of the things is the U.S. short-term rental historical performance and forecast. Right now... In 2019, there was 1,175,436. In 2022, it actually went up, which means short available listings, which means these houses were originally A, B, and B houses that's flooding the market because these people who were doing A, B, and B are actually in a position where they can't pay their personal debt and pay this vacation house or their personal debt and this investment property and instead of them going out and doing because their entire mindset was not even a short-term loan or a long-term perpetuity, local municipality perpetuity bond, their whole idea was a day type of transaction. I want to make my whole payment. Forget about doing a lease. Why well, I got to just give them to them for one month? Well, I can make $1,500. I can make six grand on this house, which means they were caught in the real estate bull market, and in that real estate bull market, you can manipulate certain things, but remember, all your decisions that you make in life are annually. That means you pay a power bill for 12 months. That means you're gonna pay a water bill for 12 months. You're gonna pay taxes for 12 months. And even though you're making that money, that's what we like to call seasonal revenue, and you never went back to stable revenue. Because all you got was green eyes and greed, FOMO. You made money, but it's not going to be long-term. Because if the Fed say, we're shutting this sucker down, they shut down cryptocurrency, made it harder. See, people may say, oh, what? Now they're doing it with A, B, and Bs. You don't understand. These lobbyists are not stupid. They already figured out, we got hotels. That part of it where the government says, you don't have to pay your lease. That affected people who were doing short-term and people who were doing long-term leases. Well, what happened to these A, B, and B people? I want you to know between, la I want to say starting in November of 2021, all of those people who had A, B, and B, start life started to get harder for them. I'm telling you right now. Spring, you were fine, but now it's starting to get harder for you. Now we're about to go, like I told everybody else, winter's now here. And now you're about to see 
Not Airbnb, you can keep your property there. Somebody may want to come in town for the holidays, see their family members overpay. But people are now are going to look at price. They're going to look at how much money they're spending because the government stated, the Fed stated recently that they want to stop spending. That meant for me, as I had already said, all my investments are long term. They're always a long term with a long term view. I'm not interested in a bunch of capital gains. But what I will tell you is this. A, B, and B's methodology will remain for those people who are seasonal. But for those investors who are new, who don't understand real estate, and they keep listening to these people on IG and Instagram, but let me tell you the one thing that I will tell you. Unless these companies, unless the person you listen to has a listed company, which means they're registered on the Secure and Exchange Commission, and they are publicly traded, these CEOs are not opening their mouth about no Airbnb. I keep trying to, Buffett is not telling you none of it. Car Icon is not telling you about Airbnb. So I always try to figure out how come the people who are not listed love to give people all the advice like gurus when they're not really a guru or a ru. Well, really, they are a ru, and they ain't really got the goo because they're sitting here talking to a regular person that they ain't got no time to be dealing with. Not especially if you're making that money you're talking about. So I share that with you to say this. This is the most dangerous time if you're an A, B, and B person right now. This is the time you have to take a reality check. And that's what I want to do for you today. I want to give you a reality check by telling you this. You have to switch now off that methodology. And if you cannot pay the rent and, and make any money, you got to understand you entered that way when you used the wrong loan product. You manipulated the industry that gave you the loan, knowingly doing that. You ran that situation, and you gotta now go to long-term leases. How come? Because a long-term lease gives you consistency. So the issue is, you was never trained to manage the funds you have coming in, because it came in at such a high rate. You were like, all I gotta do is pay 1,500, but I'm making six grand on this. No, you don't have to pay 1,500. I keep trying to tell people this. If you have a, if your mortgage is the total thing that your, your perpetuity, your local municipality perpetuity is 1500 that you sign, that's the lease. Your mortgage is a thousand. You don't have to pay. And I said 1500, that's not true. It's actually paying a thousand dollars a month. So you got to pay 12,000. And if you never got that money, that 6,000 in two months, and you just paid your mortgage for the whole year in two months. And I know you didn't do that. I know for sure you didn't take two months on the best months you ever had during the height of a bull market in the spring season when people come and maybe college kids came through, they stayed at your property and you paid your mortgage for the whole year. Or you set that money aside that it automatically ducks at your account. You know the reason I know you didn't do that? Because if you A, B, and B in it, you gotta deal with cleaning, you gotta deal with the, the keeping everything on, and that doesn't allow you to do that. Too much, you need more than $12,000. I know that just looking at the numbers. You don't know that because you're looking at Greed for your number. So you're not looking at all the truths. But what I can tell you is this. Don't say I didn't tell you first. Don't say I didn't tell you first. I love to come on YouTube as a businessman. And again, if you never like, subscribe, and follow our channel, and you think that, hey, this guy's just talking stuff, prove me wrong. I, I've been telling that. I don't mind being wrong because if I'm wrong, at least I prevented somebody else from being harmed by at least saying, wait a minute, he's telling the truth. Because you can look at your actual income coming in and start to see that there's a trending down. That's no different if you bought a stock at $10 and you notice that next month is now at $9.50. The following month is now at $7.99. The following month, it went up back up to $9. You're like, okay, oh, whew, I'm good. But then two months later, it's trading at two. Just to be quite honest with you, you're like, well, I didn't see that coming. I did. I, I would have saw that coming. How come? Because I would have saw the numbers before you enter. If you can read the numbers before you enter a transaction, all the numbers that subject you to be what we call capitulation. That's what's happening now in the real estate market. Capitulation is happening and it's happening on two fronts. Right now, real estate taxes went up, even though they want an interest rate of going up. So that meant that you're going to be have to pay higher real estate taxes even though they're lowering home prices. This is funny, I tell you, this is crazy. So 
Your real estate taxes that got adjusted during the bull of the real estate market is not going to get dropped. I'm going to tell you this now. I've been a homeowner for several times in my lifetime on more than one house. I have never seen in my lifetime where the my taxes, once they started going up, jumped down by $300 the following year or the year after that. How come? Because they budgeted now on the new money for the schools, the counties, and that municipality. That's why I say you write local municipality perpetuity bonds. That's not going to adjust. So your taxes are going to go are going up as your house price is doing this time where interest rates are going up. And then they also now you're getting less house. Landlords are increasing on long term perpetuity municipalities they write in, but they are bond writer. If you're going to go into real estate, understand about the bonds. And some of you guys who got these houses in bad neighborhoods, these are, those are that triple B and triple A bonds. There's some bad bonds that you write now here in these local municipality bonds. We're going to get into that a whole nother, a whole nother video. We're going to talk about how to write the best local municipality perpetuity bonds. We're going we're gonna to go over that. How do you write the best bonds so that you get the proper fixed rates on your leases? That's the next video we'll talk about. But far as the day is concerned, you need to understand that as rates are increasing, taxes are increasing, power bill, water bill, the house prices are coming down now. They're now coming down out of being from being overpriced when people was bidding, you know, the house is 100,000, I'll buy it for 250. That made no daggone sense. But that people were doing that stupidity. Oh, the house is 100,000, I'll buy it for 180. The appraisal says this house is 100,000. Paying 80,000 over because you get bidded up by somebody else, that's FOMO. And we've seen this. You stuck in this house. I just want to be very honest with you. You were stuck in this house for a while if you bought this house. Now, with that being said, remember the goal of doing anything is making money. Now, Airbnb going to make money. They don't have the responsibility that you do when it comes to the loan that you agreed to. And they get to make a fee off of you. So here it is. The funny thing is that all this leverage is happening. And let me just erase this so you can see something here. In case you don't know, you now know, is you using FOMO, fear of missing out, is the bank leveraging, I'll put the word leverage here, you, you have Airbnb leveraging You and you got the right the local miss the local miss with oh shoot the local municipality <laughs> perpetuity bond and you already have one leverage is your own emotion feeling like I gotta get involved now I gotta get involved now second the bank says yes I'm about to leverage you and the bank itself only pays its stockholders. And that's if they pay their stockholders either once a year or quarterly. But you got to make your monthly payment every month. So you end up making a monthly payment. They only make a, either once a year or quarterly payment. And during this time since November 2021, a lot of the banks cut their dividend. But you, that didn't work for you because you borrowed from them and you got to pay monthly. And then the A, B, and B fees actually went up. And I don't think people realize that. A, B, and B, because of COVID, had to increase some of their fees. So everybody's fees went up. And you say, well, I'm going to write a better bond. Uh, you better write long-term bond then because you can increase that. Certain states have different, as far as how much you can raise in a year. But I'm telling you this, you won't be able to do it leveraging anymore, air. A, B, and B. You're not going to be able to do it. You're going to find yourself being hemmed up and you're going to be having two houses. And, it's, and let me just tell you this. Don't lose everything because you're being prideful at this point. You may have six or seven. And let me just explain to you. Each home that you're A, B, and B in must maintain itself. If you're sitting here prideful, like, well, I got six properties and three of them pay and three of them don't. But my three that pay covers my three that don't. Let me just tell you. You're failing. 
Each individual property is its own property. That's This is not a six unit, guys. This is one house, then you got a second house. Each house has to generate the profit for you. It is no such thing. Well, it is if you're going to be running like you're poor. Robbing Peter to pay Paul. If you believe that is the best way to run this, I'm going to tell you like this. Get out of real estate. Because real estate is going to get on you and you're going to lose. Now, again, don't forget to like, subscribe. Definitely comment. I'll do a follow-up video to this. I'm going to put up more charts so that you can actually see. And I think it's important that you understand that if there is no other channel that's calling things, don't forget to watch the CFS show because I'm going to call it. This video is not going to be perfect because one of the things that I always is, and I'm a human being. And as a human being, I can be right and I can be wrong. And I have an opinion. And that means I can be opposite. I can be very oppositional. And if I'm be oppositional, then I'm going to tell you like this. You're going to love this channel because I come at you and you get to come at me. Hit me in the comment section. Till next time, have a wonderful day.